Alright guys, what's going on? Welcome to your next Android tutorial, Databases Part 3. This was going to be a really long tutorial when I thought about it, so I decided to uh, shorten it a little bit. But essentially what we're going to do now is we need to query data back from our database. And in the last episode, or last tutorial, we put in data, now we're going to query that data. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to open up over here our files. And I'm going to go into our layouts. And the side fragment, don't forget, uses the new activity layout. This is all getting a bit out of hand at the moment. We have the comment button. And I'm displaying this on phone for some reason, so I'm just going to say the Nexus 1 in portrait mode, just to make things more clear. I'm just going to drop in a new button. Okay. And we're going to create this button to be query. Okay. And we're just set that technically we should be using a string resource, but I'm lazy. Okay, so we're going to create a new uh, button listener. So button query equals button. Find view by ID or dot ID dot query. Okay, then now we have to set our listener. And click listener. That didn't go too well. And add our un unimplemented methods. I'll change to, whoops. Add a, there we go. So what we want to do is, we want to query the database, naturally enough. So remember we have our database created, so we're going to say db dot get, is it, I'm trying to think now exactly what it is. Yeah, it should be db oh, I'm, I'm mixing up something here now. Ah, yes, I, I'm making a muddle of myself. The DB is the get readable database. So we're going to say uh, cursor. So when you're reading data, okay, remember the data is stored in rows, and the cursor object is essentially a list. It's essentially, the cursor is what points to the row. So the cursor object will contain all the, will move through the rows. So essentially, if we've got five rows, the cursor we set to point to the first, and then we're going to loop through until it reaches the end. That's the way the cursor works. So cursor cursor equals db dot query. Okay. Now we need our table name. So we're going to say db. Remember db helper to get our table name. We use this method so that we only need to change it once. Columns. Well, what we're going to do is the columns I am. Um, yeah, so we need to get make up. I guess the, the columns is a string array, so we need to create our string array. I'm, so I'm a little bit rusty on whoops on the old databases at the moment. I usually use cursor loaders, and this isn't really an issue. But we're just going to create our string. This is what returns the columns in each row. So string columns or string uh, this the square brackets. columns equals and then we have our opening and curly braces to denote an array because remember this is an array and we want our db helper we'll get two columns so we're going to say we're going to get the name comment and of course the email okay so that's what columns now as for selection just null everything else is going to be null these are more advanced options for like group by you know these are different uh, squall arguments that you can put in you know if it contains certain things um, if you want to order it by date we're just going to order it by the keys by the one the in incrementing key number that we put in but you can uh, have it in have it so that it in it 
goals with the newest first or you can have it so that it organizes via which was posted first this is useful for YouTube and stuff like that okay so now we have our cursor now we're gonna say cursor so first of all we have to do is get the cursor to the first okay and we're going to stop move to first okay what this does is it just it moves uh, the cursor to the first row of the database now we're going to say for oh no, while is what we need while cursor dot move to next now you can use a for loop to create this as well but I prefer using a while loop essentially what this means is it's going to um, move to the first and then it's going to move to the next each time naturally enough so while cursor move to next so we're going to say we're going to get a string variable name equals and it's going to be cursor dot get string and then it's cursor now I'll explain this in a second but we're just going to put this in first dot get column index and a db for dot name this is a big line of uh, code essentially what we're actually saying here is move to the cursor to the first row okay now and then the, that means that cursor now contains all the objects in that row all the strings in that row and each one of them has a key or like a name the db helper dot name is your key now what we're actually saying here is assign the string name so we're gonna say okay get the string from the cursor and get the column index so essentially this is this means get the column or get the um, column the, the it's hard to explain this get the name or get the uh, section of cursor the string under cursor under name and get that string essentially this is just how you get variables it's a little bit hard you understand it when you start working with it yourself Anyway, we're going to do this a few more times. So string comment equals cursor dot get string and then cursor dot get. Now I've spelt that arse ways because I'm a fool. I n d x helper dot comment. So essentially what we're saying is get the string uh, with this field on it. Now you can, you can, and you can also see the importance of having those static access variables or like constants up here in the DB helper class because it makes it very easy to um, access certain data. Or it makes it very easy so that if, if I want to change the name of a, type, of a database column, I don't have to change all of the strings here because I'd forget one and you just end up having a, a schmuck shambles so that's that so how we're going to display this is we're just going to make a toast so make toast and then we have to have our context so get activity and then we have our string so our string is going to just be a name name equals plus name we'll, ju we'll just we'll just show up the names in fact we'll, we'll show up the next thing as well sure plus we'll just put in a slash n for escape character I actually have to make a subtle change here so I had to just change something in my settings I'm using an American keyboard on the Irish layout you can't get the backslash character so I keep switching between I've hotkeyed the switch between American and US layouts or Irish layouts because I'm an idiot but uh, yeah, name and then comment or comment equals. I'm just say plus comment, and we'll leave it at that. And then we need a t is toast dot lent short, and we're gonna just make a, another change of dot dot show. 
That is the official quick and dirty way of making it. A bit of a hiccup there. It's actually toast.make text. I'm an idiot. Oh well. Idiocy aside, that, that's how you make that, okay? So now when we run this, it should loop through the uh, arrays and tell us what to get. So we're going to click run. And we have our emulator here ready. I really dislike using the emulators. I really wish I could uh, just you know, have a camera set up beside me or something to record my phone screen and use on my S3. Anyway, it is running. Console. I'll just bring up the console. Yeah, it's currently installing. I don't think you guys will be able to see the console because I have it kind of hidden. Yes, success. Okay, press me. So remember how we have our databases in? So if we hit query, we should get a few toasts popping up one after the other. There, see? Okay, I actually put in data into the database earlier, but we'll put in another row, okay? Yeah. So we'll just put in some uh, garbage data, which is just something to show you what's actually going on. And we'll just say e email, okay? Get rid of that. Comment. Now, if we hit query, we should get uh, two things. See, toast. Yeah, so we get the next toast as well. That's okay. Now, one thing we do need to do here is actually we need to close the cursor because otherwise we'll leak connections to the database. And if you don't do that, you're going to end up in a mess. Now, see the way here we have db equals db helper dot get writable database. Well, we're going to close that database in the next uh, video, but that's been you know querying data from a database. The next video, we're actually going to change this, and we're going to build a list view, which will automatically fill itself with all the data from the database. So we're actually going to create a list view that will down here that will automatically fill with all the data we need, and this is very useful if you've got reams of data. For example, in one of my recent apps that I've currently made, is the Pixel Enemy app. And it has list views of all the videos done by the different pixel enemy channels in it and images and everything. And we're going to show you how to modify views on the fly and various things like that. But that's this tutorial. It's been good talk. See you out there.